We are so thankful that you have made the choice to tune in for one of ACC's messages. You know, as you're listening and diving into the truths that are being shared, we challenge you. If you're sitting at your phone or at your computer, hop on social media and be sure to use the hashtag you belong at ACC as God is teaching you different things during this message. You belong at ACC and we truly mean that, which means that we would love to have you join us during one of our Sunday services at 710 Aqua Heart Road. We would love to have you jump into this message and we are believing God is going to do some awesome things in your life today. So for those of you who don't know me, my name is Mac Ferrer. I serve as the Executive Pastor of Operations and uh, when we have two of our pastors at our mission trips and one that has to lead worship up here, they call the, not the AAA, but the single A team to <laughs> and find the next best thing. So if you're new here, it can only get better next week and the week after that. So... Uh, so I appreciate you guys and Grace, and I kind of say that jokingly because, I mean, it's been five and a half years um, since I've been on the stage here, um, and so uh, we're going to set a low bar, and we're going to get through this, and it's going to be fun. Well, maybe not so much fun. Today's a kind of a hard topic, um, but one of the things that I uh, just want to let you know that we're into this brand new series called Stay tomorrow needs you. Um, and this was inspired from the t-shirt that I'm wearing, and because May is typically Mental Health Awareness Month, and what we wanted to do as a church is to talk about it now, um, and over the next three weeks, talk about how what it means to stay here and what it means to stay connected so that we can begin to be vulnerable, be authentic with one another, uh, and to be able to shed some light into something that is, is very dark. Um, one of the reasons I love this shirt is on the back of it, it says uh, a semicolon is used when a sentence could have ended but wasn't. And so it ultimately what that means for all of us in this room, because we are still here, our story is not over. Um, and so... The message that I'm going to be talking about today is one that I, even as a pastor on this staff, uh, need to keep in my back pocket because it's a good reminder that even pastors are not exempt from, you know, 1 Peter uh, 5.8 that talks about how the devil will roam around like a roaring lion just waiting to pounce or ready to devour anything that it comes in contact with and that we are not exempt from that. So... Let me reintroduce myself the proper way. My name is Mac Ferrer, and for the last 16 years, I struggle with anxiety and depression. And that's tough. I told first service that I was not looking forward to making that opening statement, knowing that we also have a wonderful online crowd as well. Um, but it's one of those things where if we, I, am not open and transparent and honest about a subject as tough as mental illness, then it's more than likely that not everybody else is going to have that same conversation. And where that ultimately leads is everybody continuing to live in darkness. And so as I had mentioned, 16 years ago, so it puts it around 2007, um, it's a day that I'll never forget because it was one of those things that I felt like just 100% came out of the blue. Um, there wasn't any type of rhyme or reason. Uh, sure, growing up, I know, uh, you know, tough household, and you know, there was certainly some trauma that was in my life. And but at a point of when I was became an adult, you know, I wasn't really thinking about those things anymore. I was just living my life the way that I thought I should be living my life. Um, and then I just, I can recall, I'm laying in bed, and all of a sudden, I was just struck with fear, um, and I was shaky, and I couldn't understand why I was having panic attack over panic attack, and just kind of the weird uh, manifestations, like the weird things that I was feeling, like I couldn't think of why. And then the darkest thing that has ever happened in my life 
is I'm laying in bed and I'm praying, because I'm a new Christian at this point. Um, I'm sitting there, I'm praying, and I'm wondering why, God, why do I have to keep? Because I was also recently baptized, so I'm thinking, as a new baptized believer, it feels a little early in the game for me to have to suffer any of these things that I'm suffering right now. Um, But Satan and what he does in seeking to kill, steal, and destroy was erasing every thought that I had built a foundation on, a biblical foundation on. And what I found myself was thinking, you can end it all. Like the pain that you are feeling right now, you do not have to live with that pain anymore. And I remember tears rolling down my face, and I had the the Bible that I got when I was overseas, And I'm just gripping it, and I'm gripping it hard, and I'm trying to figure out, God, I know this isn't your voice. I know, I know, I know, I know this is not your voice, Um, but the thought kept coming over that if you just end it, there'll be no more pain. And I don't share that story often just because, one, uh, I'll be truthful, it's one of the reasons that has kept me from being on the stage over the last five and a half years is because I look at it and I think, what an embarrassment. Here it is, somebody who is a part of the pastoral team of this church is supposed to have it together. It's supposed to be leading the charge, leading the congregation with the rest of the pastoral team And here it is, I'm struggling with my own doubts, fears, anxiety. And what the heck am I going to talk about? That's why I was so honored and floored that we had an opportunity to do this series. Because it is something that I'm extremely passionate about, and it's something I want to be vocal about, and it's something I want the church to be more vocal about, because it, there's an estimate, or it's estimated that over half of the U.S. population is dealing with some form of mental, mental illness. And that's through suicide, whether it's through depression, crippling anxiety. So which tells me every one of us in this room probably knows somebody. And it's one of those things that I guarantee maybe one out of every two people in this room is dealing with something which means it's more than likely not only somebody in this room, but there's also more than likely somebody in your row that's dealing with something. And so when we had the opportunity to, to do this series, I said, no more hiding. I need to step up to the plate and because God has a message. And so as I've been praying and preparing for this message, that's what I hope comes across today. It's not any of my words but what is it that God wants everybody in here to hear? Because there's an entire community here, state and country and world, that needs to hear the gospel and how that we can overcome depression and mental illness through the power of Jesus Christ. So let's, let's pray with me. Father, we are just so humbled and we're honored that you have even given us this time here to be able to talk about as something as difficult as mental illness. But Father, what I can only hope and pray for is that this is a message that you have written. That Father, allow me to step out of the way and I'm just here as a voice and I ask you to open up our ears and our hearts and our minds, Father, to receive the truth of what you want us to hear, Father. And how that through the death of your son, Jesus Christ, through that resurrection power, Father, that There is nothing that we can't overcome, Father, through Jesus Christ. And so, Father, just continue to be with each and every one of us. I just ask for your presence here, and we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So, if you don't mind, like I said, we're setting the bar low. (laughs) So, I'm going to sit down and uh, be able to deliver us the best, best that I can for you guys. But we know that mental health is a crucial aspect of overall well-being. Yet it remains a topic that is overlooked or stigmatized in many communities 
and I would even say, sadly, the church. However, as followers of Christ, we are called to care for one another and offer support to those who are struggling. The Bible is very clear that we are to uh, love our neighbors as we love ourselves, that we are to bear one another burdens. This includes addressing mental health concerns that may be impacting individuals within even our own congregation here and our community. By breaking down the stigma surrounding mental health and offering a safe and supportive space for discussion, I believe the church can play a vital role in promoting healing and recovery for those who are struggling. Therefore, it is important for the church to talk openly about mental health, provide resources, and provide support to those who are in need. According to scientific research, it is evident that we have an addiction to technology, and it's on the rise, causing decline in our relational skills, our family structures, and even mental health. Anxiety has become a regular dinner guest at our dinner table, and young people are facing unprecedented rates of depression. So we cannot simply brush mental illness aside, telling those who suffer from it, just get over it. Just pray more. Mental illness is a powerful force that affects individuals in different ways. It can cause suicidal thoughts, depression, crippling anxiety. As believers, we must acknowledge the complexity of mental illness and talk about it openly. It's important to understand that mental illness is not a one-size-fits-all problem. It can occur for a variety of reasons, such as trauma, genetics, chemical imbalances, stress, personal failures. The problem with mental illness is that it can't be seen and it can't be touched, which makes it even more frustrating for those who are battling it because you can certainly feel it. Mental illness can tighten its grip and strengthen in the darkness. Depression and anxiety can be at their most powerful during the darkest hours of night. However, the power of depression weakens when we step out of the darkness and into the light. We can step out of the isolation of depression and into the community where we can be honest about our struggles. It's not enough to remain silent. We must speak up about mental illness and shine a light into the darkness. Although mental illness is complex, we can find hope in Jesus Christ who triumphs over all things. In the darkness of depression, we must lean on Jesus and his light to overcome. It's important to acknowledge that those who haven't gone through mental illness, this isn't a knock on you, but it's something that you cannot fully understand. But it is a reality that you have to step into. We must also recognize that mental illness affects many people in the church, and most importantly, that we are not alone and our struggles. We must show up for one another and provide the support and understanding that we need to make it to the other side. As believers, we must understand the power of mental illness and the grip of darkness that it has on people's lives. We must offer love, support, and empathy to those who are struggling with mental illness. Knowing that with the help of doctors and with Jesus, anybody who's struggling can make it back to the land of the living. My ultimate need was a miracle from God. And thankfully, I received that miracle. I stand here grateful for the deliverance that I received and knowing that I would never want to experience that kind of depression again. But however, I recognize that my experience has given me a level of compassion and understanding that I wouldn't have known otherwise. And if you're in that place of struggle, I'm not here to offer you a simple solution or shout at you to pull yourself together. I'm here to remind you that you are not alone and that you will make it through the grace of God. Depression is a real and dangerous force, but it is not bigger than Jesus. And if you're in the midst of panic or suffocating thoughts of suicide, please know that you are not crazy. You are God's creation, and he is greater than anything 
in this world and greater than anything that you are facing. We must take depression seriously, but we also must trust in the power of Jesus to overcome it. I need you to receive this truth. You are not crazy, no matter how severe your symptoms may seem. Although there may be signs of crazy in what you're experiencing, you are still God's creation, fearfully and wonderfully made. Most of us came here today with the understanding that the topic of mental illness, mental health, will be discussed. And as a church, I believe it's something that should be talked about more. We need to break down the stigma surrounding depression and suicide and create a safe space for people to share their struggles. We can't continue to ignore or hide the reality of mental illness in our people, in our lives, in our lives around us. Because suicide is the fastest growing killer of our young people, but it's not just a problem of our youth. When you look at the CDC stats, suicide is the fastest growing killer of, uh, excuse me, of people who are 65 years and older. It's also, when you look at it, it's primarily a white male issue. In 2021 alone, 48,143 people in the United States alone lost their lives to suicide, which averages about to 132 people a day, or one person every 11 minutes. This problem is not isolated to a specific group or region. It is here with us, and we must address it head on. In this moment, I know Jesus is wanting to step into the conversation. I know that he is wanting to step into the fight. He is wanting to step towards people who are thinking about giving up on it all. And I know this is a conversation that people want to have in this church. Two weeks ago when we announced it from the stage, people were coming up to me and we're thankful that we're going to be talking about it, asking how they could help. Even on my social media pages, people were excited and were talking about it. And, uh, and so they understand, I think, the importance of this topic. And it's a reminder that depression and suicidal thoughts are all around us, affecting people of all ages, from elementary school students all the way to CEOs. So the church cannot afford to stay silent or on the sidelines. We must talk about mental illness and suicide, which is why we are discussing it today. By speaking out, we hope to destigmatize mental illness and make it easier for people to talk about their struggles. So do we think that the church become a place where people feel comfortable saying, I'm depressed, I'm on medication, I have suicidal thoughts? You know, I think I need to go to a, uh, I, need, I think I need to seek treatment. Could it be a place where everyone is welcome with no stigma attached with any struggle that they may be facing? Because the pressure to feel okay is a heavy one, and sometimes it's even greater in the church. After all, faith is supposed to be stronger than anything in this world. But what happens when you walk through the door and you're not feeling victorious that morning? When you're drowning in the darkness and feel like you're losing your mind while everyone else has their hands raised, worshiping and listening to the message. It's even worse when you feel like you can't be honest about where you are. So we must create a church where honesty and vulnerability are welcomed with open arms, a place where everyone feels accepted, supported, regardless of what it is that they are going through. To the church, to a large extent, has pushed the notion that suicide is the unforgivable sin. Such stigma is unfounded because scriptures do not teach that suicide is unpardonable. When you read the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, it explicitly states that blasphemy against the Holy Spirit is the unforgivable sin which means repeatedly rejecting the Spirit's invitation to come to Jesus. Because it is impossible to have a future with God if one persistently ignores the Spirit's call. But in the church, we raise several questions. Shouldn't faith be enough? As a Christian, 
Shouldn't you overcome depression and mental illness struggles? Even the church as a whole even still struggles with whether or not people should be on medication because they're not trusting God enough or see a therapist or be in counseling or a treatment facility. The church's message should be clear and not merely just pray more. If you pray more, Jesus, I promise, he will, he will take it away. And so I'm asking, is there anyone in this room and where I can get a, an amen that has been in the church long enough to know that it is not that simple for everyone? Amen. Everyone experiences instant healing. We must create an environment where people don't feel stigmatized for struggling with their issues. Our worship is great. Our stories are amazing. The messages are powerful. But it's unrealistic to expect someone to instantly get over their struggles during a simple, excuse me, during a single gathering. Even those of us who are part of the church, we may not have it even fully overcome the things that we are dealing with. Breaking down the stigma requires honesty and vulnerability. The church should boldly declare that it's okay to not be okay. In fact, if you need help, don't hesitate to get it. Get help. And if you need help, seeking the help of a doctor or therapist can be a part of God's healing plan. Because every good and perfect gift comes from God. So any healing that takes place in a person's life is ultimately a result of God's grace. So please, if you need help, don't hesitate and reach out. And the one thing that I absolutely love about our church, I love how welcoming from all corners of this community we are with people going through various circumstances and situations. And I thank God that when they come through our doors, they don't feel ashamed or judged. They don't feel the need to hide their reality. They can be true and find Jesus. They can find healing and they can find help. It's important that we don't put up a facade of the church and forget where we came from and what we went through. When I was coming out of the, darkest, the darkness, I realized that I was going to make it back out of that hole and come back into my right mind. I had a choice to make. I could have simply just closed the door and never thought about it. But as a man and as a human being, I realized I had a stewardship of a story, a miracle of God's grace that someone else needed to hear. Because we all have defeats in our story, and we've all overcome something. The worst thing we can do is act like we never went through it all and tell others, just get it all together. The church must be honest and real, and once we do that, I think the stigma is lifted because the last thing the world needs is a fake church. If you're not a regular churchgoer, or if you're visiting us this morning and you're not sure where you stand with Jesus, let me tell you something about him. He values authenticity, and he hates when we put on a facade. In fact, he said, I have come to heal the sick. And he came to seek and save those who are lost. So if you're doing okay, and you don't think you need any help, you're unlikely to experience the transformative power of Jesus' resurrection. It's only when we are honest about who we are, where we are, and where we've come from, that we become candidates for experiencing the power of God. He's here right now to heal and to save and to create a culture of honesty and authenticity. So let's do that. Let's give people the time and the space to heal. It's a process, because the process of restoration takes time. While Jesus is capable of performing miracles instantly, that is not always the case. We pray for miracles in every gathering, and we have faith that they will occur. However, it's important to understand that a miracle may come in the form of making it through the very next day, or that miracle could be that you made it through that week. Because as a church, we see you, we're here for you, and we love you. And so we want to destigmatize suicide and mental illness by talking about them more openly. 
Taking your own life may seem like an escape from your pain, but it's important to realize that it's not a part of God's purpose or plan for you. Your destiny is to say and to overcome the challenges you're facing. It's also important to understand that taking your own life won't make things better for anyone, especially not for the people who love you. In fact, it will only leave them with a different kind of pain that they will have to live with for the rest of their lives. They will feel guilt, doubt, and anger, and they will question on why they were not worth fighting for. Even though they will intellectually know that it was the darkness was the real culprit, culprit, the pain in their soul will be so agonizing. So please, do not believe that you are a burden and that you are a burden to anybody or you think that you'll be better off. No one will be better off without you. No one. And so I believe that it's important for you to stay even amidst the pain and trust God to perform a miracle and grant you another sunrise and another day to believe in Him. Our church needs to develop a better message than it's okay to not be okay. And all this message has its place. It cannot be the entire message because our story includes a resurrected Savior. And that's why we point people to Jesus and to keep our focus fixed on Him. Because even when we are not okay, Jesus is okay. He is a victor with scars. He has overcome and is present in this place. He understands what we are going through. Did you know that Jesus was even tempted to take his own life? When you read it in the Gospels about when he was in the wilderness, the enemy tempted him, saying that he should jump off the greatest, or excuse me, off the highest point of the temple, and that, that the angels would save him. Jesus was weak and he was tired. He had been 40 days and 40 nights without food and water. So imagine the pressure and the stress that he was dealing with at that moment. But he didn't give in to that temptation. So when it says that Jesus, that he has been tempted in every way we are, it truly means in every way. If we, choose, excuse me, if we choose to confess the truth over lies, we can participate in our own future. Our own words have the power to shape our destiny. If we constantly say, I'm not going to make it, I'm not going to make it, there's no way, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't, we are increasing the likelihood of not making it. But we can choose to say something different. We can acknowledge that we are not okay. We are not okay. Declare, Jesus is also declared that, that he is alive, and that, that he is alive, and that he is in control. By doing this, we are participating. By doing this, we are participating in a greater, that is, our greater circumstances. We are declaring that there is hope. Declaring that we can trust. That we can trust, that we can trust that to see Jesus. That Jesus, that Jesus can see us. That Jesus can see us through. So now, let's not, not settle for. Slogan, let's not just that settle okay for a slogan that it's okay to not be okay. Let's speak truth over our lives. Let's speak truth over our lives. To believe that we can participate by knowing that we may not by knowing that we may not Jesus is okay, but Jesus is okay. So by also counterbalance the weight of the situation by speaking words of faith and bringing Jesus into the darkness. Confessing the reality of who Jesus is can bring a glimmer of light into the darkness and bring hope for another day. While circumstances, may not, uh, while circumstances may not always reflect the faithfulness of God, we can still trust that He is good even in the darkest moments. It is not a simple fix, but by using the power of your words, you can create a future that you will live in. And the church needs to understand that God may not be able to take all the pain away on this earth, but there still can be purpose within that pain. And by taking the pain to Jesus, you can trust that he can use it for eternal good and change. 
Because suicide is ultimately the ultimate rejection of God's plan for your life. And by staying and leaning on Him for strength, you can bring glory to His name. So I ask you, I, I'm telling you to stay. Stay for yourself. Stay for your family. Stay for your friends. Stay for your church. Stay for the world. I had already mentioned earlier that there was half the U.S. population is suffering from mental illness. By you staying and willing to take a step of faith, transparency, authenticity, being vulnerable, by, willing, by you willing to do that, you are actually not only giving yourself, but you're giving somebody else that hope too. By letting them know that you are not alone in anything that you are going through. But most importantly, stay for God and for His glory. You have more power than the enemy would like you to believe. Because at one point, I didn't think I had that power. It pains me to think, had I gave in on that one night, the woman that I am married to, my three precious girls that I have, I wouldn't. And I praise God, even 16 years later, of still dealing, because it just doesn't go away. I'll be honest, there are moments I still have crippling anxiety. There are times I still have depression. I had the power to praise God in the dark place that I had. It was the darkest place I'd ever been in. And what I did was I used that power and I pushed back against the enemy. And I say that with humility because as I had mentioned, it's still things that I deal with. So what do we do with this? You know, we usually end the, the sermon with a what now, God. So in my, what I, my thoughts are, we stay here. If you're someone who needs help, get help. If you don't have a church home, if you're not in a small group, If you don't have somebody that you can trust and talk to, there's a phone number on the screen there, 988. You can call right from your mobile phone and it'll connect you, to, connect you with somebody who will be willing to help you. We need to stay connected. You need to read your Bible and you need to be able to meditate on this day and night. There are two scriptures that I wanna give you if you wanna write them down. The first one is Psalm 118, 17. And what it says is, I will not die, but I will live. And I will declare what the Lord has done. And that may be something that you have to tell yourself and read over and over and over, because when you read it and you confess it, you believe it, and that's when you start to see that transformative power, that resurrection power that we have all experienced who are in Jesus Christ. We have to understand that when Satan speaks in our lives, he's speaking in his native tongue, which means he's lying. John 10.10 10 says that Satan seeks the enemy, seeks to kill, steal, and destroy. As a new believer, when I was in that moment, that's what Satan wanted to do. He wanted to get me away from the, the pattern of thinking that I should have been in and overcloud me with fear and judgment on why I didn't deserve to be here anymore. The other one I want you to write down is 2 Corinthians 10, 4 through 5. 
It says the weapons that we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to diminish, demolish strongholds. We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself, sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take every captive thought and make it obedient to Christ. So when you're in those moments of feeling depression or anxiety, and you have all those lies running through your mind, you need to be able to understand, and it kind of leads into the third one, and how you can stay grounded. Because you need to understand how you can separate the truth from the lies. This is the truth. And when you feel or hear God is speaking anything other than when Satan is speaking anything other than what God has told us, we need to be able to take that thought, make it captive, catch it, make it obedient to Christ, and tell myself that is not the truth. And you need to be able to find yourself some sort of anchor scripture, anchor verse, that when you're going through that moment, that's where you get yourself centered on. There's a reason that God gave us five senses. To be able to center yourself and you're in that moment, just look out. What are five things that you can see right in this moment? What are some things that you can smell? What are some things that you can touch? What are some things that you can taste? Like find ways to bring yourself back to truth. So that way, every time Satan speaks, you know it's a lie. And you've got something that you can stand on that's greater than anything that this world can ever offer. So where I want to end today, and this is for anybody like me going through it, I want to read this quote, and many of you may be familiar with it, but it's from Theodore Roosevelt, and it's called The Man in the Arena. And it says, it's not the critic who counts, not the man who points out how the strong man stumbles or where the doer of deeds could have done them better. The credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena, whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood, who strides valiantly, who errs, who comes short again and again because there is no effort without error and shortcoming. But who does actually strive to do the deeds? Who knows the great enthusiasms, the great devotions, who spends himself in a worthy cause? Who at the best knows in the end the triumph of high achievements? And who at the worst? And if he fails, at least he fails daring greatly. So this place shall never be with those cold and timid souls who neither know victory nor defeat. In the midst of life's battles, we always must remember that we are not fighting against flesh and blood, but against the spiritual forces of evil. Satan would love nothing more to keep you where you are. So it is okay to not be okay, because we know Jesus is okay, and he will get us through anything and everything that we could ever experience. So please pray with me. God, we are so incredibly humbled. humbled. We're, we're honored that you have given us this place, this freedom to be able to discuss some of these hard truths that we need to accept in life. That we are not crazy. That it is okay to not be okay because we know that through the resurrection power of your son Jesus, because he is okay. And we know that there is power in your name, we know there is victory there. We know that there is nothing more than you wanting to embrace us. You know that there is nothing more that when we do pass from this earth, you're hoping that we have put our trust into you. We have accepted you as Lord and Savior. And knowing that even though we are going through some pain, we don't know pain like your son knows pain. Your son's pain had purpose. 
So Father, I ask that as we come to you, allow our pain that we may be suffering have that same purpose. Allow us to do something with this because I know that it's not wasted. You won't waste any of this stuff. We know that there are people who need to hear this message. And unless you have given us no arms, no legs, no tongue, no mouth, no phone, no Bible, no friends, Father, we know that as long as we are here, we know that you are giving us another opportunity to do something with it, to be able to share what we know, to point others to Jesus so that they can have that same freedom that we get to experience. So, Father, as we leave, don't allow it to just be something for today or this moment. Don't allow the case of the Mondays to come around and we just go back to our daily whatever. But, Father, I ask that you just please, I just ask that you push us outside of our comfort zone, whether it's going through it and you want to help somebody or somebody who may not actually be going through anything but knows of somebody who is and can be that prayer warrior for them and to keep them strong and to keep them grounded and to get them through some of their darkest days. Thank you so much, Father. We are so grateful for this time and I just simply pray this all in the mighty power of Jesus' name. Amen. Well, we are so thankful for the truth that was shared in this message today. Please know that we, as a church, are praying that what you have learned today, the truths that God has put deep into your heart, will manifest themselves and grow themselves into something amazing. And as always, you can experience that with other believers, other people who are walking this walk of faith at ACC on Sunday mornings. Please remember this. You belong at ACC.